YouTube, hello, welcome to the stream. Wait. YouTube, hello, welcome to another video on the channel. And today, we're going to be taking a look at a ultimate tier list for Transformers games. It's been a while since we've actually done a tier list video. I think it's been about five or six months. And that was Call of Duty. Go check that one out, by the way. Do it. Do it. So, with the uh, imminent release of uh, Transformers Rise of the Beast that's hitting cinemas next month, I thought it might be a good idea uh, to actually go ahead and do a ultimate tier list uh, video for Transformers games that have come out over the years. Uh, so, there are some games in this list that I haven't played. Um, there's some, there are some games that you might have played, but uh, I would love to hear your uh, your suggestions and uh, your your tier lists in the uh, the comments below. Always love to hear that. And uh, yeah, so a little bit of a disclaimer, I didn't include um, some Transformers games, uh, there was like DS versions of like let's say the movie games and all that because um, I haven't really played like the portable versions of the movie games let's say, um, so it would just be like a complete waste of time, I'll just put them in like the uh, the last night category, uh, which is like the Doom that I haven't played uh, category, I would have put them in there. Um, so uh, there are of course some acceptances. Uh, but yeah, we have about, I think about 18 or 19 Transformers games to uh, to get around. Uh, so I guess without further ado, let's uh, let's kick into this, shall we? So, the first game on our list is uh, Transformers, uh, the PS2 version of the game uh, that came out in 2004. Uh, this game was absolutely amazing back in the day. Um, I recently played it on my uh, totally legitimate PS2 that I found. And um, yeah, so this was basically a, a game based on the Armada uh, series. This was um, very, very, very good from what I remember. And of course, I recently played it as well for uh, for bosses on uh, on another channel. But um, yeah, so this like um, loosely follows um, some sort of like storyline for the Armada series, uh, where like you control three different types of Autobots. Uh, you control Optimus Prime, of course. Uh, Red Alert, which is like uh, the ratchet of that series, like the medical doctor of that series. It's like on the bottom left there of the uh, of the cheek of the logo. And uh, you also control Hotshot, which was like the bumblebee of that series. He was like a little yellow car. Um, yeah, so you're, uh, you're tasked to find uh, little minicons. Uh, the minicons being like... Um, little transformers that could give you abilities uh, so some would give you uh, traversal abilities like a jetpack or like a double jump sort of thing uh, others would give you uh, different types of weapons so like uh, you know a laser beam or rocket grenade launcher thing it was dope and then you would have to go out and um, fight other Decepticons so there was like Cyclonus which is like a helicopter uh, there was Megatron of course uh, Starscream was in it twice, those bosses were great, and then at the end, uh, spoiler for like a, a 20 year old game by the way, uh, you fight um, Unicron, so once you get all the minicons in um, in the game, I don't remember how many, but there was quite a lot, uh, once you get all the, um, all the minicons, then you have to go back to Cybertron, and then you have to fight uh, Unicron, which um, tries to eat Cybertron, because he's a big massive planet. So, um, it was amazing. I absolutely love this game. So, I guess without further ado... Uh, hang on, let me just try and size this up if I can. Try and include everything if I can. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to have to put it in the You've Got the Touch category, which is like my S category. It's going to have to go there for obvious reasons. Way too many great memories, way too much amazing awesomeness. I wish... They would actually have ported this to the Xbox uh, because I would absolutely love to play this game legitimately um, again, especially for a stream. I would absolutely love to do that. Right, so the next game, this was like the original Transformers game. This came out in 1985 uh, for the Commodore 64. For those of you who do not know what the Commodore 64 is, it's like a, a home computer that was like revolutionary at the time. It was like its own... Um, it was a console, but it was mainly for the the PC. But uh, this was on it. So this game, I don't remember much of it because I had to actually look up and see gameplay for this. Um, you just go around, you know, with like these little tiny 
transformers go about your business doing adventures trying to see how far you can get whilst trying to survive and take out decepticons you know the usual business um but for me personally i haven't played this game so uh it's gonna have to go into this category because i haven't played it unfortunately but from what, it, what i've seen it actually looks quite cool um, i'll probably like include some gameplay over it so you can see uh, over this video i'll include some gameplay so you can see what it kind of looks like all right so this one is the uh the transformers what's this battle uh to save the earth uh again i think this came out for like home computers and commodore 64 uh systems and all that but um requires a joystick that's dope uh but yeah i have no idea what this game is about so i think it's like the same sort of deal as uh the commodore 64 game i think uh, but without further ado, it's going to have to go into that category because I haven't played it. Um, same again with this one. So this one is a Japanese exclusive uh, Transformers game. This is based on uh, Ultra Magnus. Uh, which was kind of like Optimus Prime, but not Optimus Prime. He was in the uh, he was in the Transformers movie, the, uh, the original Transformers movie. Um, and of course, with this game, uh, I saw Game Grumps play this ages ago. I think that's when um, Age of Extinction came out. I don't remember when that movie came out. Uh, but yeah, they played this on their channel. And it's seizure inducing. It's insane uh, how it looks. Because as soon as you start the game, it like flashes the screen at you with like really harsh colors of like red, uh, red, blue, and white. I think it just keeps like flashing the, the screen for like a good four seconds. And then you get into like a side-scrolling, uh, side-scrolling sort of fair where you have to guide Ultra Magnus uh, to the end of the course whilst avoiding Decepticons that come at you. Uh, you can transform into his truck. Uh, but yeah, I haven't played this, but I've seen Game Grumps play it. It looks all right, from what I've seen. It looks okay. But yeah, Caesar Inducing though, it it doesn't it doesn't help the eyes at all. Uh, right. So yeah, we've got three more games which I haven't played. Uh, this is the Headmasters. This is a... I don't think this was a Japanese exclusive, even though it says the Japanese collection on the top there. Um, this came about around about the same sort of time as all the other, like, old Transformers games. Uh, this was, um, based on the, the cartoon, which was, like, on its final season, I think, at that point. There was, like, four seasons of, like, the old school Transformers um, but yeah, I have no idea what this game is about. I've only just recently looked it up for this video. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to put it in that category, I think, because, well, I know that for sure because I haven't played it. What are you talking about, Jack? All right. Got two more games I haven't played. So this one is Beast Wars Transformers. This came out on PS1 in 1998. So I would have been about three years old. Uh, so I have definitely missed out on these next two games for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is like a beat em up, like a uh, like a fighting game, uh, where you pick your own transformer and then you have to fight an, uh, like another transformer. I think that's what it is. Um, again, I'll put some gameplay up so you can see what it looks like. But um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's some sort of like fighting game. I haven't played it personally, but I saw it on any totally legitimate site uh, for totally legitimate games. So I might go ahead and see what it's about we might uh, we might do a video on it maybe possibly in the near future but uh, yeah for the time being it's gonna have to go into the last night category just uh, do that all right last game on the list oh my god this box art great all right Transformers Beast Wars trans metals again I think this is kind of like similar to Beast Wars uh, the original Beast Wars game. This came out on, of course, um, PS1 and also Nintendo 64. Uh, again, I saw it on a totally legitimate site, so I might uh, give it a go in some sort of future. So, without further ado, let me put it like that. Let me try and make some space for it now. Hell yeah. So... Let's have a looky look. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Ah, now we're starting to get into the good stuff. Right, so this is Transformers the Game. This was uh, loosely based on the 2007 film. 
And uh, this game was absolutely incredible. I had this on the PS2 back in the day. And um, yeah, so with this game, you control uh, both sides. You control Autobots and Decepticons. They, own, have, they all have their own um, playthrough. Uh, so there's like two playthroughs you can do. Um, yeah, this is loosely based on the film. You control uh, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Megatron, Starscream. Scorponok was there for a little bit. Blackout was there. Blackout was like the helicopter Decepticon. He was there for a little bit. And um, yeah, you would go around these uh, little maps that were uh, based on the movie as well. There was like the Hoover Dam. Uh, there was also like the suburbs and the city level. Um, I think there was also a... Like an army base in the desert as well for like the, the Decepticon campaign. Um, yeah, you would go around these little maps and you would do um, just miscellaneous missions of like destroy all these Autobots or Decepticons in this area, go to this area quickly, um, fight the boss, and then you rinse and repeat all the way until the end of the game. Uh, but I didn't mind it. I really didn't mind this game at all. I thought it was a good time. Um, but yeah, last time I played this was when I had my PS2, legitimately by the way, um, so that was going back like 10 years ago, even more probably. Um, I don't know where to put this one, I think I might put this in the B category, I might put you there. Because I still, I had a good time with it, but it was not as good as I probably remember. Um, I probably might be blanking out some things because uh, there were some missions in this game that were traumatizing as all buggery uh, so I uh, I don't remember the game all that much but if I had the ability to get let's say uh, the first game <clears throat> excuse me uh, Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon if I had the ability to get those three games again I probably might do streams on them uh, in June for when uh, for when uh, Rise of the Beast comes out uh, so, sp speaking of uh, the second game, Revenge of the Fallen, here it is. Uh, this game came out in 2009 to uh, co-exist with the uh, the movie that came out at the time as well. Um, this one was a step up in the right direction, I think. It was, again, you had Autobots and Decepticons. They had their own sort of uh, campaigns. And this was loosely based on the film as well, but they also included... Uh, some extra scenes in there just to like flesh out the, the game and the story a little bit more. Um, again, you control like Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, I think Starscream was in it at one point. Megatron was definitely in it at one point. Uh, there was also a guy, Sideways, I think his name was Sideways because Sideswipe is the Autobot, but Sideways was the Decepticon and he was an Audi. Um, I remember that much uh, that much because I was into Audis at the time and I always used to pick him all the time. Uh, this also had multiplayer as well. It had online multiplayer, uh, which I played religiously as a kid, uh, especially when the uh, the online was free at the time for P uh, for PS3 owners. Uh, so I played this religiously, and uh, you could control well. You could transform on the fly as well. With the other Transformers games, it was like a button press, um, and he would do like this whole animation of transforming. But with this game. Uh, you would have to hold down one of the triggers. I think it was R2 at the time, I think, or like L2, one of the one of the two. And uh, you would have to hold that button down uh, to go into your vehicle form. And then, uh, if you want to come out of it, you just like release the trigger, and then you could just do like all these crazy like transform to attack or transform to shoot uh, moves. It was good. I really, really enjoyed it at the time. And then you had Devastator. You had like the Fallen as well uh, for bosses. Um, I think you, I think there was like a, uh, a boss fight where you controlled Megatron and you have to go up against the Fallen at one point. So it's like an alternative uh, playthrough for the Decepticons, but it was good time. It was a good time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I think I might have to put this game in the A category. I think if I can somehow do it without losing its integrity. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's going to go into the A category because it's just above uh, the first game. So I, I had a good time with it as well and I, rem I remember it a lot more than the first game. But yeah, I, I'm going to have to put it there. Alright, so this is the third game. This is the uh, the Transformers Dark of the Moon video game uh, that released alongside the, the film, of course. But the greatest thing about this one is that this was uh, published or developed, I should say, by High Moon Studios. 
So High Moon, they're known for like the uh, the Cybertron series of games and also Deadpool as well. But now, uh, with Activision being Activision, they assigned a lot of these these um, these companies uh, to go ahead and just work on Call of Duty. So High Moon Studios is now working on Call of Duty multiplayer and stuff, which is a very sad time indeed. But going back to Transformers games, this is Dark of the Moon. This is the third in the series and this one is completely different so this doesn't follow the movie at all uh, this was a prequel to the movie which i think was a very very good uh, direction indeed uh, this would uh, take place before the game uh, before the movie sorry and you would control both decepticons and autobots but with this game um instead of like being totally different campaigns they would like weave the story together so like one minute you'll be playing mirage at the time mirage was like this red ferrari and he could go invisible and then the next mission that you do you could be playing uh sound wave uh so it was really really good i really really enjoyed this game uh it had online multiplayer as well uh which at the time was great um and also a very easy like game to platinum or a hundred percent if you're into your uh, your trophies and achievements, it's definitely one of those games that's easy to to 100%. So I'm going to put it in the you got the touch S tier uh, in this uh, in this list uh, purely because I had a good time with it and I remember it very fondly and I absolutely enjoyed this game 100%. So I'm going to put it in the uh, the you got the touch category. Right um, here we go. So Transformers animated the game. So at this point, I was transitioning uh, out of Transformers for the time. Um, I was going into like other things, uh, but yeah, this is the. I think this only came out for like handheld to like Nintendo DS for sure. I don't think it came out on anything else. But um, I mean, I, I played it a little bit, and I was like, nah, I can't deal with it. So I'm going to put this in the C category. So the C category for me. Um, in this sense is like below average so B is average C is like just below average I really didn't enjoy it at all um, but yeah I mean it's it is what it is it's like a portable Transformers game that you could just play on the go whatever's oh look Angry Birds Transformers <laughs> enough said all right so Transformers Prime uh, the game this came out on like Nintendo consoles I don't think this came out on anything else um i played it a little bit as well because i had a wii do you remember the wii <laughs> yeah I, I played it for a bit and it was all right so i'm gonna put this in the c category again with these kind of well with who cares about angry birds right uh but yeah the animated game and prime i mean i i played them but like it wasn't for me it was more targeted towards younger generations of kids but it wasn't my cup of tea uh, so I'm probably going to get lynched, or I'm probably going to get uh, whatever about these these two games. But for me personally, I mean, it's my opinion. I mean, I don't like these games at all. Uh, but now we're going back into the the best uh, the best Transformers games. This is Transformers War for Cybertron. This was uh, High Moon's first Transformers game. This was like their own interpretation of like the Generation 1 cartoons, like the old cartoons back in the day in the 80s. Uh, this was their own uh, their own take on it, and I really liked these games. The, the Cybertron games were absolutely incredible. You had uh, multiplayer as well, uh, and you also had like this horde style, like escalation mode they called it. Um, but I really enjoyed it. The game sort of like, the game story sort of takes um like hints of like old transformers cartoons and all that it tries to be really um it tries to keep the source material uh very close uh because they were like passionate fans about the uh, about the series and they really wanted to do the game justice so the story sort of takes place on cybertron and um it's the campaign is divided into two sections autobots and decepticons uh with the first half of the game um Decepticons and then the second half is the second half is all about the uh, the Autobots and um, Yeah, so it was about Megatron and he wants the ultimate power the power of being like a, a prime and all that so he takes 
um, the ultimate like power source of the of the planet, and it causes a um, like a like a self destruct of the planet, really. So that's why they had to flee uh, flee Cybertron. So in this in this case. But uh, yeah, the boss fights were dope as well. I really enjoyed the boss fights. Boss fights against uh, Trypticon and uh, what's his name, uh, Omega Supreme. They were like huge Transformers, so like the scale was incredible. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. All right, Transformers Battlegrounds. So this is the, one of the more recent Transformers games. Uh, as you can see, their designs are like loosely based on their like old 80s cartoon selves. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think what was the genre, the, the genre of this game? I think it was called like a. I think this is an RTS. I think you would call this as an, as an RTS because uh, I recently played this on stream as well. Uh, you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. I'll probably leave a card so you can go and uh, go and see it for yourselves. Um, yeah, I'll call this an RTS because it's like a top-down sort of game and you would have to control your units um, to like do these objectives and like try and get to the end of the end of the mission sort of thing. So yeah, this was an RTS. Uh, there wasn't any bosses to think of. There was one against Megatron, but that was like all the way at the end of the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't mind the game. It, I, I was kind of looking for like a new Transformers game to play at the time because I was into... Uh, I was into like something Transformers related. I need to play something Transformers related, so I did that on stream. Um, but I thought it was, I thought it was okay. So I'm going to put it in the A and the B category. In the B category, I'm putting it in. It was average for me. I mean, it was okay. It was all right, but you know, nothing too great. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Right, we're almost there. We're almost there. Right, Rise of the Dark Spark. This was. I don't know what to say. This this game was uh, very misleading, uh, to say the least. The trailers looked absolutely incredible for this game. Um, it sort of uh, takes inspiration from Age of Extinction at the time. So hence you can see, uh, what was his name? Lockdown. Uh, Lockdown top left. Uh, Grimlock on the bottom. Uh, bottom left. And then you have like the Age of Extinction version of Optimus Prime in the middle here. But then, over on the right-hand side here, this is the uh, this is the Cybertron series version of Megatron and also Shockwave. So this game is like a multiverse uh, sort of fair where um, you know it, it sort of like takes place with Age of Extinction, but also the Cybertron series. But at the time, the Cybertron series was done. Uh, I. Did High Moon Studios do this game? Did this game? I actually don't know. I'm gonna have to see that if High Moon actually had anything to do with this game. But yeah, this game was very, very misleading. So the trailers looked absolutely dope for it, and it was like, oh, sick! You know, a new Transformers game after a Fall of Cybertron. We were waiting for this kind of game uh, to drop. But then, of course, you play the game, and it's crap. <laughs> it's absolutely 100% not worth your time. Uh, it was. Oh man, I did not like this game at all. Uh, so I guess without further ado, I'm going to put this in the C category. I wish there was like another category of just like a dustbin and just put it in the trash. Um, yeah, this game was very misleading and very poorly... It was very poorly received. I'm basically saving you time. So if you see this game anywhere, like anywhere at all, don't pick it up. Just don't. Uh, I don't have this game anymore because I sold it. Thank God I sold it. Um, but now I'm starting to think, should I actually get it again just for a stream? Uh, I'm contemplating it very, very hardly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to have to go in the C category. It's below average. I, I wish there was something lower. Like, you know, like I said, like a trash category. But without further ado, you're going to go there. All right. Fall of Cybertron. Transformers Fall of Cybertron. This was a follow-up, a sequel uh, to War for Cybertron. Uh, this would take place, uh, I think, right after the first game, where uh, the Autobots have to escape Cybertron because the planet uh, has lost its resources. I think this, I think also the planet was dying as well, so they had to like escape and try and find uh, like a new home. Um, so 
the Decepticons were like, oh no, they, this can't happen, and we're gonna have to stop the Autobots once and for all, and we have to try and conquer the world, or the universe, really, uh, rather I should say. And um, then, you know, the, the the Decepticons, you know, catch up with the Autobots, and then Megatron dies for a little bit. And then Starscream is like, I'm the new leader, you know. So it's very, like, old cartoon heavy because that was what Starscream's deal was. He always wanted to be, like, the leader of the Decepticons. So he would always try and uh, destroy Megatron any way he can. But in this case, it was Optimus Prime and that robot in the back of the, uh, the cover there. That's Ultra Magnus? No, what's his name? Metroplex, that was his name. So Metroplex was like this huge fortress city type deal. Um, and he would just like crush the shit out of Megatron. Um, and that's how he dies for a little bit. And then you would control uh, Grimlock with the Dinobots at one point. And then Megatron, of course, comes back uh, at the end. I mean, it's, it's very good. I wish we had a sequel to this game. I really really wish we had a sequel to this game like a third game just to round out the trilogy i don't know what they would call it because you had war for cybertron fall of cybertron uh they might have called the third one i don't know return to cybertron or something like that but i wish we had a sequel to this game just to like round out the trilogy uh you also had like multiplayer again like the first game uh online like pvp multiplayer but then you also had like pve multiplayer uh which was like player versus everybody uh multiplayer which was uh, like escalation again so it was wave based um, combat you would have to go to like eat you have to go like through these waves uh, try and survive these waves all the way to the end uh, it was so so good uh, again played this religiously uh, so without further ado I'm gonna have to put this in the only category that matters which is the you've got the touch category hell yeah but uh, yeah, so recently as well, they released Fall of Cybertron on uh, Xbox One consoles. So like uh, digitally, you could go ahead and buy this game. For some reason, they did that, but not War for Cybertron. I don't know why they didn't include War for Cybertron as like a, a bundle. Um, it's, it's a missed opportunity because, again, I would have played these two games for sure uh, on these newer generations of consoles and get like uh, achievements again. But I do have Fall of Cybertron, <clears throat> excuse me, on um, on Series X. I do have that, uh, and I also have War for Cybertron on the 360. So uh, we'll be definitely doing streams on those two uh, in June, for sure. Uh, speaking of doing streams as well, uh, we're going to be doing this one for sure in June. Uh, this is Transformers Devastation. Uh, this was uh, pub, uh, developed. Sorry, uh, this was developed by uh, Platinum Games, uh, which are known for their crazy, over-the-top combat games like uh, Bayonetta. Um, I think they did Bayonetta. They did Vanquish for sure, and also they did a TMNT game, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, as well. Like they're these over, over-the-top, like action-packed combat games. It's insane. Uh, yeah, so this one was based on Transformers, and as you can see, they're based on their, like, old 80s cartoons, uh, or, or these old 80 cartoon selves. Uh, so you can see where this is going. Uh, I'm a sucker for, like, the Generation 1 style Transformers cartoons. I'm a sucker for them, uh, for the old school stuff. But yeah, this was, this was great. This, uh, the story for this game, uh, was Megatron wanting, again, the ultimate power, which, again, I think it was some sort of, like, spark related thing i'm trying to remember now it was like this this little orb thing and it was like so powerful that megatron wanted it to like conquer the universe uh so it was up to the autobots which you control uh to go ahead and stop uh megatron so in this game you control optimus prime uh you would also control bumblebee uh wheeljack and also uh sideswipe so you would oh and also Grimlock. So you have like these uh, you have five different Autobots to uh, to control, and it was um, it was level based, like uh, level chapter based, uh, where you would go ahead and see how well you can do like score wise and time wise and all that. But uh, this game was absolutely incredible. I mean, it still is incredible. 
uh, with that cliffhanger ending as well, we need a sequel to this game. It was it was on it was left on a cliffhanger. Um, I don't remember what the the Transformers name was at the end, but it it was sequel bait. It had potential to be sequel bait, but this game was absolutely incredible. The boss fights alone were absolutely insane. Of course, you have Devastator there. Uh, Devastator being like a combiner of the Constructicons, so good. You fight him multiple times, you fight Megatron, you fight Soundwave, you fight uh, Starscream, uh, what the hell was his name, Menasaur, which was again another combiner like Devastator but with the, with the Stunticons as well. Uh, it was so, so good this game, I really, really, really liked this game. Uh, really can't wait to actually play this game on stream. Uh, that's for sure. This game is going to be absolutely incredible to play on stream, uh, especially for the bosses as well. I absolutely love the bosses in that game. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think that's it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Hell yeah. So 18 Transformers games are there. Uh, let me know if I've missed any out. Like I said, uh, I missed out uh, purposefully the uh, the movie tie-in like DS games of like Autobot and Decepticon. Um, I intentionally did that because I didn't play those. Uh, but I wanted to include these ones that I didn't play down the bottom here because these were uh, not revolutionary at the time, but they they had they served their purpose of being there for uh, for Transformers fans. But uh, yeah, so that is my ultimate tier list for Transformers game. Uh, let me know your uh, your tier list in the comments below. Always love to hear that. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy with that list. Definitely. I, I really, really am happy with that list. But uh, yes, guys, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, uh, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, also ring that bell to stay notified when I go live or when I do post videos. And um, yeah, again, I'd love to hear your, your comments in the... Uh, in the comment section, uh, funny enough, and uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, for future tier lists, uh, it's good to be back doing these again. Uh, I definitely had to do this one with the uh, with the release of uh, Rise of the Beasts, which I'm really excited to watch, uh, especially now that we've got a live action Unicron um, actually happening, which is fantastic. Uh, cannot wait to see that film. But yes, guys, thank you all so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. And as always, I'll see you in my next video stream. Take care, good night, and God bless.